You're good. Good evening and welcome to the May 19th, 2020 Virtual Village Council meeting. Pursuant to the extended executive order number 20-69 issued by Governor Ron DeSantis, municipalities may conduct meetings in their governing boards without having a quorum of its members present physically or at any specific location and utilizing communications media technology such as telephonic or video conferencing as provided by section 120.54 uh, sub 5 sub b2 of the florida statutes the meeting will be opened with a moment of silence may we please have a moment of silence I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. Madam Clerk can call the roll. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Village Attorney Serafan? Present. Village Manager Benton? Yeah. Councilman Brady? Councilman Meltz? Here. Councilman Lafredo? Here. Vice Mayor Birch? Present. Mayor Wagger? Here. You have quorum. Thank you. For this May 19th, 2020 virtual council meeting, the Miami Shores Village Council is convening by Zoom as posted on the village's public notice, which also identifies how the public may view, listen, and participate in the meeting. Please note, this meeting is being recorded. The agenda and all supporting documentation are available on the village website. In order to ensure the public has the ability to view and listen to the meeting, the village is broadcasting the meeting through all the usual communication channels that are provided when a village council meeting is held fully in council chambers at Village Hall. This includes live streaming via the village website, Facebook, Instagram, Nextdoor, Public Stuff, YouTube, and Twitter. Additionally, the meeting is also available on Comcast Channel 77 and YouTube the day after the council meeting. You may also listen to the live meeting by calling the dedicated Zoom phone line as indicated in the public notice. And with that, um, before we move on to public comment, uh, I believe we're going to show a token of appreciation for Dr. Kelly Andrews, Executive Director of Doctors Charter and I will pass it over to Vice Mayor Birch to do the honors. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Uh, if Dr. Andrews joins, we'll show her this beautiful plant that she will be able to take on our behalf to grow in her new location, the way she has helped to grow our location. So I have a few words about Dr. Andrews' accomplishments, which are legion since she came four years ago to our school. She cared for our building and grounds as if it were her own home. The school has never looked so good, presenting a pleasant face to the public, students, and faculty. She developed the use of board docs for easy, organized access to the public record. She nurtured and developed a stronger cooperative relationship with Barry University. And she completed the technology program that the school has implemented in record time. All class classrooms have new laptops and most have new projectors. This was a major accomplishment. She got at the school through the Sachs Cassie Advanced Ed Accreditation Process and the school is accredited through 2021, thanks to her efforts. 
She rose to the challenges of the Stoneman Douglas security mandates. She did her own security training. She developed new policies and the student life adaptations that were necessary. She adjusted her budget to conform. She has uh, given us three years of a clean audit. She saw the need for a development and development director, and she started a new signature fundraising event, the DCS Hawks Run This Village 5K to benefit athletics. And then she was tasked, starting this past late summer, with a charter renewal, which turns out was incredibly complex and required countless hours of her devotion to the task. Ask her someday to, uh, soon to show you the number of notebooks that she put together to categorize all the classes of information the district required to renew the charter. My hat is off to Dr. Andrews and I hope you'll join me in a round of applause for her service to our school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well stated, Vice Mayor Birch. I couldn't have said it better. That she's just done wonderful things. She's since she's been here, and I know that school means a lot to all of us. So, I'd like to thank deepest appreciations to Dr. Uh, Kelly Andrews, and we wish her only the best in her in her new forthcoming endeavors. So, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm humbled by these words and appreciate all of you for the support you've given the school during the time I've been here. Um, so it's, you know, it's always a team effort. It's never anything one person has done. So um, thank you all for your support. And, uh, and it's been a great experience to be here and to meet all of you. You have all crossed our path in life and, uh, and have made an indelible mark. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Andrews. I couldn't see you there on the screen, so it's nice. I can see you really small there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for all of your hard work, really. So it made a difference and it's making a difference in the lives of many students that you've encountered and teachers and administrators. We really appreciate uh, how you came in and how you left it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll move on to our public comments portion of our virtual meeting. To provide a reasonable opportunity for public comments, the village has encouraged the public to submit written comments prior to the start of the meeting using the village's new e-comment function. The village clerk will re read e-comments into the record. Please note as the presiding officer, I may exercise authority to limit the length of time of public comments in the interest of time and to preserve decorum and order. Please note public comments is not a Q&A forum. Therefore, if you have any questions, please contact individual council members and or staff prior to or after the meeting. However, all comments will be included as part of the official record for this virtual meeting and will be considered by the village council prior to any action taken. Interested parties are required to abide by all state, county, and local emergency orders and are urged to remain at home and practice social distancing. If the proposition is being continued or rescheduled, the opportunity to be heard may be at such later date before the village council takes action on such proposition. And with that, Madam Clerk, we'll let you uh, go forward with the public comment portion of our meeting. First comment is from Susan Ackley regarding Country Club Next Generation. As an aging in place Shores resident, I'd like to support the development of a luxury residential complex similar to Quayside. This is not meant to be an assisted living facility or other iteration of such, but an upscale apartment high rise option to single family homes for all age groups. Number one, rezone the property to allow up to 20 stories on Biscayne Boulevard in Miami Shores Village. Having discussed this with other residents, I'm aware of the three-story building height restrictions, which I thought only applied to downtown. Extending this restriction to Biscayne Boulevard's commercial corridor seems unrealistic and unnecessary. A viable luxury residential complex can contribute to MSV's tax base, but only if it's able to sustain itself, which can't be achieved within the three-story restriction. 
Number two, determine, mitigate the legalities of maintaining, eliminating the golf club component. The golf course and its club has been pointed out to me as an MSV charter condition. This can be either amended or mitigated by reducing its size to a nine hole course or its elimination altogether. Evidently, this is a declining sport as the population ages and courses throughout the country are closing. The elimination would be, an op would be open in enormous swath for new mixed use community development. Number three, recruit a luxury residential developer. With the aforementioned two restrictions addressed resolved, the recruitment of an established developer through an RFP process should be easily accomplished in our South Florida region and or nationality, or sorry, nationally. Next speaker is Victor Bruce. Cancellation of planning and zoning board hearings. The village should not be canceling the upcoming PNZ board hearings of May 28th or any other for following reasons. A, other municipalities such as the city of South Miami have and are continuing to conduct these types of hearings using Zoom. Contact Lourdes Cabrera at South Miami Zoning Department for more details. It will create an avoidable hardship to residents and homeowners of our village. C, local businesses like architects, engineers, and general contractors who are already getting affected by the pandemic will be heavily affected by a stoppage of one of the steps that the village requires for the permitting of residential and commercial projects. In other words, canceling P, P and Z hearings simply cancels all new residences, additions, garage conversions, new commercial tenants, and new signage. D, both building departments in Miami Shores Village and Miami-Dade County are currently accepting electronic applications for building permits. Thus, after a successful P and Z hearing, projects can continue the process as they always have, including construction. Slowing down construction of new homes slows down the village's opportunity for more tax revenue. Thank you for your time and service, Victor Bruce. Next speaker is David Benjamin. I'm a lifelong resident of Miami Shores. I would like to help invigorate the local economy and do some construction work to my home. I and many other homeowners are being thwarted from our attempts to make this happen by the continual cancellations of planning and zoning board meetings. Many other municipalities in the county have found ways to continue these meetings and help the local economy despite our trying times. Please hold these meetings as soon as possible. They can, help, they can be held virtually under the governor's executive order. There's no reason for further delay. Our economy and our community demand this. Next speaker is Charles Martin and Linda Menes. We feel that the present MS Country Club facilities offer many advantages to our community the clubhouse, golf, and tennis facilities are great amenities that, are few com that, are, that very few communities are able to offer and are the reason many choose to live in Miami Shores. These facilities add to the uniqueness of our village. We strongly support a process where the present facilities will continue to function as they are now. Next speaker is Elon Segal. Hi, Ms. Rodriguez, I hope you're well. My name is Elon Segal and I live on 500 Northeast 96th Street. It's a very busy corner and we see drivers speeding by daily. We've also witnessed multiple crashes on our intersection of 96th Street and 5th Avenue over the years. I hope the Village Council can consider the following request. Please add a speed bump or two on 5th Avenue between 95th and 96th Street. It will help slow down drivers who are constantly driving significantly over the limit. I've noticed speed bumps have been installed in other streets in Miami Shores and hoping you install one on this much busier than normal location as well. Please let me know if you have any questions and thank you so much for your time and consideration. Sincerely, Elon Segal. Next speaker is John Ice. Please accept this as a declaration of public support for the resolution item 6C, calling for the allowance of local businesses to operate more freely outside of business properties to mitigate slowdowns as a result of COVID-19. I feel it's imperative that Village becomes creative and flexible in supporting local establishments that have until recently injected some life in the Second Avenue Business Corridor. I appreciate the Council's consideration. John Ice, 119 Northeast 102nd Street. Next speaker is Brian London. Dear Mayor Wagger, the coronavirus is severe and needs to be exterminated, so we must continue social distancing. People have to stay six feet apart so they don't share their germs and get them sick. Also, they should wear masks and gloves when they go to any stores. 
If we continue to be careful, the COVID-19 will eventually vanish. Please make Miami Shores people continue quarantine to make them safe. Sincerely, Ryan London. Madam Mayor, this concludes public comments. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We'll move on to approval of the minutes. Approval of the May 5th, 2020 Village Council Workshop Minutes. Do I have a motion for approval of the 2020 May 5th Village Council Workshop Minutes? I'll move the minutes. Do I have a second? Mr. Mills. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Item 5B, approval of the May 5th, 2020 Village Council meeting minutes. Do I have a motion, motion for approval of the May 5th, 2020 Village Council meeting minutes? I'll move those as well. I have a, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? Thank you. Item 6A, a resolution of the Village Council of Miami Shores Village, Florida, confirming the council's intent to utilize the uniform method of levy, collection, and enforcement of non ad valorem assessments, which here and after may be levied by the village in accordance with the provisions of section 197.3632 Florida statutes and providing for an effective date. Staff on this item is the finance director through the village manager. Also, you have from myself as well as a resolution that was prepared by outside counsel Terry Lewis that was here uh, that is here tonight on the uh, broadcast with us and we also have Kelly Westover who did the uh, backup work and analysis and her team uh, who's also on uh, Kyle's also on the broadcast with us as we discussed in our last council meeting the average property owner along um, um, Northeast, the Northeast Second Avenue Business District uh, is going to see an increase of $3,120 for their sewer maintenance uh, fees that we have. As I outlined for you in my memo, the warranty has expired on our sewer system uh, in, in reference to the grinder pump lift stations behind each building. We have elected to use the uniform method of assessment for the collection of these fees. Um, you have in your packet a uh, resolution that we need to pass tonight so that we can move this item forward. If you have any specific questions as to how the uh, rates were arrived at, Ms. Westover and her team can answer that or uh, any specific questions in terms of the resolution, Mr. Lewis can answer for you. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Does anyone have any questions? I do have a question as to how the rates uh, were determined just for benefit of information for myself and maybe the public that is not aware. Kyle, can you respond to that or, or Kelly Westover? Yeah, absolutely. Tom would be, be happy to add to that. So uh, in order to conduct the analysis this year, we worked with uh, village staff in order to gather information on two fronts. Um, one was the actual capital costs. So when the assessment was first set up in 2015, there were estimated construction costs for the water and sewer system. We were able to gather the detailed information which showed that the actual cost came in about 99% of budget. So good news on that, that the uh, forecast and the actual construction costs were about dead on. Um, we were able to update the uh, capital cost with that, which brought it down slightly for the remaining amortization period of 25 years um, for the affected properties. In addition to that, um, you have the maintenance cost on the sewer system. And so we were able to take a look at the uh, village's active contract with regards to the maintenance on those items. And it's relatively uh, stable with regards to the various properties for those costs. If you have the sewer system installed, uh, that cost, uh, as the town manager mentioned, is a little over $3,000 or, or so. Uh, the only exceptions to that are a property that uh, currently does not have uh, the sewer system installed, which was a vacant property. And then there were two others that had 
uh, some additional sewer infrastructure on site, which required additional maintenance costs. And so that's how the costs were, were proportioned in uh, essentially in connection with how they are uh, incurred uh, on the village's side. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other council members have any other questions? Uh, Councilman Meltz. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just for the audience and the public's um, concern, does the passing of this resolution affect the residents in any way by putting a cost or some sort of levy or tax or anything on any residence or home? No, it does not. Strictly the commercial this, this, properties. Okay. So 6A has nothing to do with any residences. It is solely based on the 27 downtown commercial parcels. That is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Meltz. Great question. Are there any other questions? Okay, seeing no further questions. Um, for the benefit, I mean, in regular protocol, I have to ask if there's any comments from the public. Madam Mayor, I have not received yeah. any comments uh, for this particular hearing item. All right, thank you. Uh, there being no uh, public comments, uh, do I have a motion uh, for item 6A? Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Madam Mayor, if we could have a roll call vote. Roll call, okay. Go ahead. Vice Mayor Birch? Yes. Councilman Lafredo? Aye. Councilman Meltz? Yes. Mayor Wagger? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. You didn't ask. Brady. Is he there? Is he here? Oh, I see him. Okay, oh. <laughs> Madam Mayor, you didn't, Madam Clerk, you didn't ask Councilman Brady for his vote. I'm sorry, I wasn't aware that he had joined the meeting. Let me document mm. that one moment. Councilman Brady, would you like to register a vote? Is he muted? He's not muted. I think there's a problem with this audio. Oh. Uh. <coughs> that better? Yes. Yes. My apologies. Yes, I did not know you couldn't hear me. <laughs> Would you uh, care to register a vote for a particular item 6A? Uh, yes. Okay. So noted. Item 6B, a resolution of the Village Council of Miami Shores Village, Florida, providing for certain increases in the schedule of non ad valorem assessments for the provision of solid waste collection and disposal services within the village, providing for conflicts, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. Staff on this item is the finance director through the village manager. Mr. Manager. Yes, ma'am. Last year, if you will recall, we hired a consulting group to come in and do a rate study for our solid waste department. They recommended that uh, we do back to back 15 year, 15% rate increases. So the uh, current fiscal year that we're in right now, we raised our garbage rates 15%. And next fiscal year, we were supposed to raise them 15%. Council had at the time we did this in last year's budget workshop, asked me and staff to come back and before the, the upcoming budget workshop that we're going to have in July, and asked us to look at these numbers and see if we could prevent another 15% increase. We have massaged the numbers, we've moved capital around, and we're pleased to report that instead of a 15% increase, we've lowered that number down to 10%. We did that through moving capital around and smoothing out our capital purchases over the next number of years. From this point on, the rate will only increase 3% over the next eight years. So we're asking tonight for you to approve this. Uh, you you have uh, before you a resolution, and again we were able to bring it down at your request from 15 down to 10. Um, the garbage the single family homeowner is currently 
paying $811.36, and that would go to $892.50 in the upcoming budget year that we're currently working on. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Are there any comments from the council? Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, I just see Holly there in the background and I, uh, Mr. Benton, and I would like to say thank you to her for her work on this item. Uh, I, I'm very relieved that the, the increase is only gonna be 10% rather than 15. And, um, and I really appreciate her work. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, Councilman Lafredo. Regretfully, I'll have to oppose this for the reasons I already discussed at our prior meetings, but I do want to commend Ms. Hugdahl for at least bringing year two down a little bit. It shows some progress. Maybe we'll make more, but again, without belaboring the point, I'll be opposing it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Lafredo. Councilman Maltz. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just wanna make sure it's clear that we already passed this last year. So as it was articulated, it was a 15% raise year one, 15% increase year two, and then 3%. So this isn't a, a brand new um, uh, resolution that, that we're trying to tax or impose fines or levies on, on the community. This is something that was already done after much debate, much work, and it had to be done to keep the levels of service that, that we, um, we heard from all the residents that they wanted. What's happening here tonight, if this passes, and correct me if I'm wrong, is actually we're saving the residents money. By the work of the finance department, Ms. Hugdo, Tom, everybody else involved, we're actually lowering it from 15% to 10%. So uh, anybody correct me if I'm wrong, but I want the record to be clear that we didn't just, while the, uh, while the pandemic was going on, find some way to come up and tax the residents. If anything, this was put on by the village administration in the best interest of the residents to find a way to lower their costs, lower bills, and keep money in their pocket. Therefore, I will absolutely vote to support this. Thank you, Councilman Meltz. Uh, any other uh, council comment? Okay. Uh, for clarification, Madam Clerk, do I Am I seeking comment from the public on this item? Madam Mayor. Mr. Lafredo. Yeah, just to make it clear, the 15% in year one stays the same. All they're doing is lowering it from 15 to 10% in year two. So I just wanna make sure that's clear for the record. Thank you. Thank you. I have not received any comments regarding this particular item and it was not advertised as a public hearing. Thank you. All right, do I have a motion uh, for item 6B? Uh, move that we approve item 6B. Thank you. Do I have a second? Councilman Meltz, thank you. Do you need to do roll call, Madam Clerk? Yes, please. Just a moment. I'm switching through screen. So if anyone who moves or seconds, if they can articulate. <laughs> That way I can hear it from the screen that I'm on to register the information, it'd be helpful. Councilman Brady? Yes. Councilman Lafredo? No. Councilman Meltz? Yes. Vice Mayor Birch? Yes. Mayor Wagger? Yes. Motion passes. Item 6C, a resolution of the Village Council of Miami Shores Village, Florida, establishing a temporary moratorium on enforcement of Section 541 of the Miami Shores Village Code of Ordinances due to COVID-19, setting an effective date and setting a sunset date. Staff on this item is the Village Manager. Mr. Manager? Yes, ma'am. We have an ordinance that requires a uh, certain amount of um, paperwork, if you will, before someone can uh, set up outdoor seating outside of a restaurant anywhere in our community. 
particularly along our downtown Northeast Second Avenue. It also requires a hearing in front of our planning and zoning board. And Richard, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, council ultimately or just PNZ. Um, at any rate, there is a process that you have to go through. I have been contacted by several of the restaurant owners on our downtown business district and asked if they can put additional seating outside of their restaurant um, along the sidewalk area there. Uh, I believe that this is the right thing to do and to, in order to assist these businesses. As you know, they can only open up at 50% capacity by stretching out the amount of seats they can have on the sidewalk. It will, it will give them an opportunity to hopefully recoup some of their losses. In order to, um, to provide us with, um, I guess, the proper legal cover, if you will, Mr. Serfan suggested that we pass this resolution which will allow us to, to suspend this, uh, the, the rules, so to speak, for the next six months, as long as we get a hold harmless agreement uh, indemnifying the village and we get our um, insurance coverage uh, co-naming us in an amount uh, of at least a million dollar uh, policy. And I recommend that you approve this so that we can give our downtown folks uh, additional uh, assistance in these troubled times. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Mr. Serafin? Yes, uh, to add to what Tom said, um, when we first approved uh, what the village calls outdoor cafes, which is basically anybody eating outside, uh, we set up a very comprehensive system uh, that does indeed ultimately require approval by the village council. I think there's only, what, Tom, two outdoor cafe licenses currently. Um, and so, under the current COVID uh, uh, situation, uh, if people were to start today to try to get approval for outdoor uh, cafes, it would take them two, maybe three months, maybe longer. Uh, and there's all sorts of restrictions and limitations that would make it extremely difficult for these uh, restaurants that are struggling to survive uh, under this situation. And people have come to Tom and said, look, can I, uh, can I put tables over here? Can I put tables in the back? Uh, and rather than uh, an ordinance, which would take two hearings uh, to set up a, an alternative approval, and rather than just looking the other way, which is something I never recommend, uh, we thought we'd ta tackle it head on. And this provides for a six month limited moratorium that we will not enforce. We're keeping our ordinance on the books, mm -hmm but we're not gonna enforce it for six months. So if the restaurants provide us insurance and a home hold harmless, they can open up outdoors, do what they need to do to save their businesses. And we won't send code enforcement after them for six months. And it's up front. everybody knows what's happening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Sarah, I, have a, I, I do have a question. Um, this is great and, and, we're, and it's for six months. However, given the fact that this condition is so fluid with this COVID-19 and we don't know, you know, what it's going to look like on the other end, how long uh, the ramifications of this are going to last, if in six months we are still sort of in the same place, will there be a, an ability to extend it for another six months? I'm worried that six months won't be enough. You can... It's a valid point, and you can extend this at any time. There's going to be at least 10 more village council meetings between now and when the sun sets, um, assuming that we take August off. Um, so we'll have plenty of opportunity to see it coming, see how it works. We may need to tweak it. We may need to do something else. But this is just a resolution. That's why uh, I think this is better than modifying the ordinance or creating a new section of the code this is easier to change. You can change it one hearing at one meeting um, and, and it's adaptable. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments from the council? Okay. Madam Clerk, um, I, do I need to call for public comment on this one as well? No? no it's not a public Okay, comment. thank you. Uh, do I have a motion? in favor of resolution 6C. I would move that we approve resolution 6C. Do I have a second? I'll second. second. Thank you. 
Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call. Councilman Meltz? Yes. Councilman Lafredo? Yes. Councilman Brady? Yes. Vice Mayor Birch? Yes. Mayor Wagger? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 7A, discussion and possible action concerning bidding out the country club and golf course operations. This item is sponsored by Councilman Jonathan Meltz. Mr. Meltz. Thank, thank you, Madam Clerk. Madam Mayor, thank you. All right, folks, as, as uh, it was uh, maybe a shock to some people this week, the village received a letter from professional course management that they declined to exercise their five year renewal for running the golf course, the country club, the, the clubhouse, um, the tennis, basically the, the whole country club. So um, I thought it'd be appropriate to, to start the conversation and maybe sort of frame what y'all want to do um, in terms of moving forward. I, I just had a few thoughts and, you know, I, um, just for a historical perspective, I wasn't here before this contract. Um, I know Tom was here. I know Mr. Serafin was here. Vice Mayor Birch was, was here. Um, Ms. Lafredo was here, I believe. But, you know, I wasn't. I've heard the stories. I've heard the horror show of how the country club turned into a disaster. And I've heard many times over how a municipality, it's extremely difficult, especially for one of our size and strength, to run a golf course. So what I am going to propose is that we get ahead of it as soon as possible, and we ask our village management to put out a request for bids, a national search, just as if we were trying to replace uh, Kelly Andrews at, at Doctor's Charter, or we are trying to replace um, somebody else from the village. We want the best, the most qualified from whatever edges of the country that could run our golf course for the best way possible financially and for the benefits of our residents. So I'm not, I don't profess to know much about how the bids went out last time. Uh, Mr. Benton, Mr. Serafin and those folks can, can illuminate us all on that. But I just want to make sure whatever parameters we're setting up that we're not limited to the Tri-County area or Florida. This should be an absolute national search and everybody looking under any, any rock in any cave or in any um, 18th hole to find the right operator for this course. Now, some of the things I'd like to put out there uh, is that obviously throughout the whole process, there needs to be the transparency. I just don't know why, you know, the, 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 the critics are out there thinking that you all and me and the administration are doing things like uh, nefariously for our own purposes in dark crevices. I mean, it, you know, the, everything's public knowledge. The, the prior uh, agreement, operating uh, contracts and everything. So it'll be the same. Everything is going to be wide open and transparent. And I know none of you would object to that. I highly, strongly recommend as much residential input as possible. I'll, I'll put it out there and it doesn't have to be discussed tonight, but at later meetings. Maybe that we start with the country club advisory committee, and then maybe we add a couple other members. There's folks who have a lot of institutional knowledge about the country club. They just don't serve or care to serve on the advisory committee. So resident input, obviously, like you all have done for every major issue, will be part of what I would propose. Um, thirdly, finances. You know, I, the, the common misconceptions are unnerving what people think about this golf course. And Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, but we make money from the golf course, which is an anomaly in the business, really. So we make something about one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars a year. Tom, is that about accurate? Yes, sir. We made so far this year before COVID hit, PCM paid the village over two hundred thirty-three thousand dollars. Last year, yeah. they paid us two hundred thirty-one thousand six hundred forty-eight dollars. So yes, okay. it is a revenue source for us. And what did we have to pay for capital costs? What did we have to pay to redo all the greens, to do the carts, to do all the equipment in the country club, the new freezers, the new electric, the new plumbing, the new roof, air conditioning? How much did we have to pay over this last contract for that? In the last 30 years, 
the village taxpayers have not put in one dime into that property, into the entire facility. All of the costs have been borne by PCM. Okay, and that was the that was the answer I was expecting, Tom, or else I'm a moron. But but I think it has to be out there that people have to understand under our agreement, unlike most other cities, and I know we'll have a lot of time to talk about this, but I, I want to say it early and I want to say it often that we don't pay for things as the village like most other cities which have contracts are responsible for all construction and improvements. So we made over $200,000 a year. We haven't paid anything, but here we are. And everybody can read the letter as to the reasons why professional course management is, is no longer interested, but that's neither here nor there. We have to open up the process. And then the last part, and then I'm sorry, I'll get off my, my uh, soapbox, is um, as part of the bid, and this is real important, and I know it's making some in the administration maybe cringe, but as part of the bid, I will absolutely insist that any new operator will give the village residents half a day a month to use the golf course for our own purposes. It will be the biggest open green and park space in Dade County for our residents at no charge for half a day a month. And that day will have to be either a weekend or a holiday. Imagine the possibilities. I know people were running crazy all over the golf course during the pandemic while it was closed. But if you, if you take away the people who are being reckless, you had families, you had children, you had people running, you had people with strollers, you had people walking, people with their dogs. As long as it doesn't destroy our investment, I think it will be a spectacular addition to the parks. It will be something worth millions of dollars, whereas we can't pay for it, we can't create it because you don't have land, but we will insist on it. You, when things clear up, you could do chili cook-offs, you could do small concerts, you could do all kinds of festivals and events on that day. And the operator will make plenty of money, and I'll, I'll give you more of the ideas at a later, at a later time. But that's what I believe we should insist and make it mandatory part of the bid to give the residents of Miami Shores the best park in not just probably Dade County, but possibly the state. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Meltz. Any other comment from council members? Vice Mayor Birch. So, um, Councilman Meltz, I, I do have to address this a, a couple of things. First of all, you did us the benefit last time when we were talking about the number of businesses by getting actually the numbers of businesses. So I'd like to give you a few numbers about the country club. Um, and many people ask, well, how many acres is it? So if you count the 115 acres of the golf course and the six acres of the club property, um, that's 121 and a half acres. That's a lot of land to produce, to re, to, to uh, provide services for even a half day a month. Now, um, when I heard this proposal just tonight from you, it made me think about the 4th of July. That is the one day a year that everyone gets a chance to share a golf course. But what if, and as you said, we want to put out a nationwide bid. We want to attract the best and the brightest in this industry. And, um, and in further sharing, I'll hold up this uh, that we received actually from PCM a couple of years ago. Um, and these copies I think should be distributed by the clerk. Um, this is uh, the city of Miami Beach, Florida, powered, uh, prepared with um, the National Golf Foundation Consulting. And they, and they are up in Jupiter and they did a full study of the Miami Beach golf course which is very revealing in terms of the kinds of amazing differences in these deals that there are throughout the country. Uh, they're, they're, they're just so different than the way we have it set up. So we don't know what they're going to ask for, but if we put the lodestone around the neck of the bidder saying that it's going to be, you know, you have to give this half day a month when they want to be, offering, uh, focusing on really good professional golf management, then I, I worry about that. 
Um, and I, I worry about making that a condition. So, um, but, but in terms of um, further study, I think we all could benefit from um, going to an organization like this and asking them to take a look at what we are planning to do with our bid itself to make it the best kind of bid. Madam Mayor. Uh, Mr. Manager. Yes, ma'am. Um, before the discussion got much further, I was going to suggest exactly what Ms. Birch has beat me to the punch on. Um, I believe it's, it's imperative that we bring in a consultant to review whatever bid documents we put together, somebody that is, you know, in this business every day. We haven't put out a bid for the golf course in, in 30 years. So I would like for the council to authorize me to uh, go out and uh, bring in a consultant to look at our final document before we put it out on the street to help us develop a nationwide bid list that I think is also imperative that we do, as Mr. Melt suggested. And, you know, Mr. Serafan and I, along with other staff members, have put together a basic document that we're polishing up right now. But I would feel much more comfortable considering the magnitude of this oh, property no. and what this means to our community to have an outside consultant looking over our shoulder to ensure that we get the best possible bidders that we can to participate in this bid, given the short time frame we have. Uh, which the current contract expires September the 30th. And just to prepare everybody, I just don't see how there's any way we're going to make that. I believe we're going to end up having to um, work with our current vendor, PCM, um, for however many months after September 30th we have to, um, just in case we don't make this. I mean, when you stop and think of how long, you know, you're, you're going to need a couple of months in order to, um, to put the bid out and have people respond. You're gonna want people to come out and actually look at the property and tour the property so they know what they're bidding on. You're going to have to then, hopefully you'll, you'll have some quality bids. You'll have to review them, which will take time. And then assuming that we do get bids and, and they're awarded, then Mr. Serafan and I are going to have to sit down and negotiate a contract with them which could take quite a while as well. So there's a lot of things that have to be done. And I think it's very important that, that a consultant sort of look over our shoulder while we're, while we're going along and doing these various steps. Thank you, Mr. Lafredo. Madam Mayor, I don't know. No, you're muted. Can someone unmute him? He, he's Somebody muted himself. No, I unmuted I'm myself. Okay. okay. I just want to know that Mr. Meltz to know that I support his proposal 100%, including the half day. I think it should be in the bid document. I think it's a wonderful idea. But for the benefit of the council, um, when PCM came in, it was a four to one vote. And I guess you guys can figure out who was the one vote against. And I was proven wrong. They did a pretty good job. But I also wanted the council to know that many years ago, a young golfer by the name of Arnold Palmer did his practice work in the winter down here at Miami Shores Country Club. And 20 years ago, when I was walking through the bar with my family after dinner, a gentleman by the name of Joe DiMaggio was having dinner with some of his guests in the, in the bar in the area where they sit. So this place has a lot of attraction that may not be immediately apparent to us. And we should probably bring in a consultant as the manager suggests, although I think we should be careful not to overpay. But I, I'm supporting everybody that wants to try and do this the right way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so thank you. I, I want to say a couple of things because I think there's merit. I particularly like the national RFP piece. However, um, I'm wondering, uh, as we're looking forward again, thinking about the situation we're in right now in these challenging times as it relates to COVID, um, I'm not married to anything one way or the other, but I wonder if there's thought being given to whether or not as it's currently used, is this the highest and best use for that land? Um, I don't know. I mean, if I think about a consultant, I wonder if there's valor or merit in having someone go out and look at a myriad of opportunities instead of just one 
right? We should maybe, yeah, we look at management, but I would also like to know what the other options could be. I mean, you know, there were residents out, you know, using the, the golf course. Um, you know, is there a development opportunity there? Is there an opportunity to bring up a, have a new sorely needed community center? I don't know. Again, I'm not married to one thing or the other, but I think this is an opportunity to, for us to see or determine what the highest and best use might be for that property. Um, I've read the con, I mean, I'm familiar with the terms of the contract that we have, with the current vendor. It's It's different from, uh, a lot of the other contracts that are out there that they have, that's for sure. But I just want to make sure that if we're looking into the future, um, we are looking at opportunities that benefit all, everybody who lives here in Miami Shores Village. Uh, so I wonder if that's even possible. I'm not sure. Um, but I know that there are folks out there in the consulting world who could perhaps advise us on not just the best management contract or whatever the management should look like for this property, but maybe also advise us on some other opportunities or some other uses for the property altogether. Is it a nine hole golf course? Does it remain a golf course? I don't know, but we're going to come out of this different than when we started it. And when I say this, I mean, this, this quarantine, COVID-19, all of that, we're going to have to start thinking differently, I think. And maybe this is an opportunity to look at some things differently. Um, so I throw that out there. I, I do think an RFP is warranted. Um, I do like the space as a meeting space for our community. I do like it as uh, uh, people go there for weddings and funerals and all that sort of thing. But are there other ways we could be looking at this 121 and a half acres that sit in the middle of our community? I don't know, I'm not an expert on that, but I, I sure would love to hear from one that might advise us on different ways of looking at the property. And it still could be, I, I don't know, but I would certainly love to hear it. And I've heard from residents myself, uh, a myriad of residents that, you know, want to encourage me to look at, and I think encourage us to look at other opportunities that might be there. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But I think in these times we have, um, we have a responsibility to think creatively going forward. And, and by the way, I would also add, whatever there might, the other opportunities may be, we can increase our tax base. That's an option. I mean, there could be additional dollars coming in beyond the $233,000 that we're getting. I don't know. Uh, I, would, I would love to learn more about it. I'll do my own independent research, but I think this is an opportunity to find out if there are other ways where this property could be utilized and or bringing in more income uh, to our community. I, I will say that and I'll, I may come back, but those are my initial thoughts. Uh, Vice Mayor Birch, did you have something you wanted to comment on? Well, I did, I did want to comment on some of the things that you said. And of course, over the weekend, I did a lot of thinking in that direction where, you know, we're using these words highest and best use and we've certainly seen them used a lot around the controversy about Mel Reese Golf Course. And I um, have done some reading recently about the back and forth that has yeah. it has come with that uh, challenge for whether or not that use should be changed and developed into uh, the stadium and multi-use uh, restaurant retail that they are planning. And so I... And I saw the struggle of that elected body trying to make that transition for that piece of property, a very large one with a lot of pressure from developers. And I said to myself, what is the one thing that we as homeowners all have in common right up until this day, we moved to Miami Shores with the promise of the amenity of a country club a golf course and country club. And because of that, and because I came to that conclusion after seeing the kinds of controversy that can erupt with a change of use, it scares me a little, quite frankly, Mayor Wagger, I have to say it scares me. Um, but the thing that makes me feel that it, that going forward with a country club is the right concept to start with is we um, we have, as others have mentioned, 
a very long tradition with this facility. We have, yes, a changing market. And yes, everyone in Miami Shores does not use it. But everyone in Miami Shores can use it. We have also now this incredible addition of the new aquatic center that sits right on the edge of this piece of property. Protecting that to me is vital. We haven't even finished it yet. And um, so in the, at this juncture, um, we may be, a pro no, this word will spread fast. We may be approached by those outside, but uh, my particular wish for right now is to go ahead with this bid process. Everyone's been wondering if there's a better deal out there for us. And when you think about it financially, that's what we want to emerge from this is the best financial deal as well as the best treatment of our property. So um, I, that's what that's where I stand right now. I would like to go forward with the bid at, for the country club as it exists. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. Uh Attorney Serpent, I just want to say this for the record, Vice Mayor Birch. I understand what you're saying, but I didn't. I didn't move here because there was a country club. I didn't know there was one, and I didn't know one existed. So, I mean, I, I think there's valor, and, and it's valid what you say. But I don't know that everybody has the same. Uh, of course, it does add value to our property, that no doubt. And I enjoy it. I am a member, um, but you know, I'm just thinking of the future, and I'll leave it there. And Mr. Serafin. Uh oh, hear you next. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just a few comments. First, um, I've been in this job a long time, but I was not here 30 some odd years ago when this contract was bid and awarded uh, white hair and white beard notwithstanding. Um, I will tell you that for 30 plus years, this extremely valuable land has been productive for the village and the deal that was struck many years ago essentially created a land bank. This land's not going anywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. We have in the existing document uh, a provision that allows us to essentially buy out the lease if we want to use it for something other than a country club. And uh, we have avoided the expense and carry costs of that land while preserving it in a nice state and generating money. That was a good deal. I don't know we'll be able to get as good a deal going forward. I, I tend to doubt it, but we'll see. That's what the bidding is about. Um, I, I do believe it's very important that this council makes the policy decision relatively promptly in the next couple of months as to whether or not they do want to continue it as a country club. Uh, and I, I take no position on that one way or the other because the object of this process is going to be to enter into a new management agreement or lease. Either one of those is not going to be a short-term document. So, you know, we need to make that policy decision so we know uh, where we're headed. And if necessary, you might want to consider a workshop just to reach a consensus among yourselves as to is everybody good uh, with that. Um, there were a lot of good points made here tonight, uh, 121 and a half acres even if only half of that or a quarter of that is developed, that is a big plus to the tax base. Um, the, the, there was some discussion of transparency and we're all in favor of transparency, but I wanna remind the council that if we do go out to bid, there are such things as the cone of silence and the request for a, a proposal of bidding secrecy so that the bidders don't know what the other bidders are doing. Um, I don't see that as a violation of transparency, but I don't want to mislead anyone into thinking that uh, we're not going to follow the normal rules. Um, the last thing I wanted to say, oh, two things. Um, don't assume just because PCM said they're not exercising their option, that they're not still interested in some other type of deal uh, with this property. I would be very surprised if they were not one of the bidders. Um, they recognize that the deal that was cut 30 plus years ago and modified over the years is a good deal for the village, not so much in their opinion for PCM, but a new deal would be a new deal. Uh, and finally, um, I would be very concerned uh, as someone has expressed about whether or not you're going to attract the best and the brightest if you put in a hard and fast requirement 
that the property that they're responsible for maintaining and which they're going to use to make their profits um, be uh, opened up to the general public without restrictions for a half a day a month, uh, I would prefer and would recommend at most we say we might give preference to bids that include that provision. But I don't think you want to chase someone away and say, we don't want to see your proposal at all unless it includes that. And thank you for letting me put in my two cents. Thank you. Councilman Meltz? Council, I'm sorry, Councilman Lafredo. Sorry. May, Madam Mayor, just a couple of points. Um, when I was running for office this last year, I got a lot of complaints about traffic in Miami Shores and speeding. If you were to develop, say, half of the country club with which would be required at least mid-rise to high-rise buildings, you might bring in an extra four to 5,000 people. Not only would you need to redo the sewer system in that area, because there is no sewer system, but you would also need to probably open up access out of that development to the west, to 6th Avenue, plus Biscayne Boulevard, which is only four lanes in that point, and there might be pressure to widen Biscayne Boulevard to pick up the extra traffic. So there's consequences to a, to a redevelopment. Plus the other thing is with that Mel Reese that the vice mayor pointed out, you know, like the Joni Mitchell song, you know, discos, restaurants and boutiques are not exactly doing real well in the age of COVID-19. So we may want to take a look at where we're headed going forward. And I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you. Thank you. And, and let me reiterate, I'm not married to one thing or the other. I just wonder if we, aren't looking at the full picture. It doesn't have to be a high rise. It doesn't have to be, we've got needs in this community. We've got old buildings. And um, I just think I would be curious to see if there could be some sort of mixed use development that incorporates our uh, government offices, parks. I mean, there's a myriad of things we could do with that if you look into it. Um, but, you know, I'll hold my powder, but I, I just uh, want to make sure. And, if, and, and let me ask you this, uh, Attorney Seraphin, if we go out to bid and we get something back <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't uh, meet our appetite or the council does not agree with, then what? Are we stuck with a month to month with the current vendor who I know will hopefully continue on? But how does that work? Your options are limited. First, let me say, I, I see you, Tom, and I'll hand it off in a second. Um, <clears throat> let's take the, the, the positive. If you go out to bid and we get bids and we don't like them, we're not required to right. award it. If we get the yeah. bids and we change our mind, mm -hmm. even if they're great bids, you're not obligated to go to contract. We have the right to reject all bids. Uh, if we go out to bid and we get no bids, or all the bids are terrible and we don't like any of them. Your options at that point are strike a temporary deal with the existing operator, strike a temporary deal with somebody else, or do it yourself, or do nothing and let it go to seed, which is a terrible option. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Manager? Yes, I think Mr. Serafin stole some of my thunder there. Uh, yes, I mean, you're, you're I think I think we all can agree now that the highest and best use of that property is not a golf course. I mean, if you put a major development or even some sort of a development on there, I think going forward, your tax revenue and so on would be more than what you will could expect going forward with a new type of agreement. Um, I don't think we'll ever see the type of agreement we had that we've enjoyed the last 30 years when when we go out if when we go out to bid. Um, with, with that said, um, those of you that were on council when we redid the zoning on Northeast Second Avenue alone, which is a very you know minor thing compared to this golf course, I think it took us two years to get through that using consultants, and that was just basically for us to decide how how the the front of the buildings look and and the parking and things and the colors and things like that. So. To, to, to do something as to, you know, let's do some kind of a major development over there. You have to understand this could take us years to get through this process. And, and either we go out of the golf course business, and as uh, uh, Mr. Serafane said, we let it go to seed. Or, yes, you are going to be paying somebody 
to to maintain it, um, you know, which is going to cost quite a bit of money uh, in the interim while we figure it all out. And I also agree with Mr. Serafin, if you put in the bid document that, um, with all due respect to Mr. Meltz and Mr. Lafredo, that one day, half a day, a month, you've got to give up the revenue, um, you know, in, in these trouble times, <coughs> that, that might definitely limit the amount of responses that you get. Thank you. Councilman Meltz? It's not often I say this, but I, I agree with everybody. You you all made intelligent points. I mean, everybody did. And, and hence my reason for putting this on and say, we have to get to work. I mean, there is just gonna be a strong sentiment of some of the supporting some of the things that Mayor Wagger has said. Are you insane? This property is worth $200 million. You won't have to pay taxes for years. You can build your new community center. You can get 42 dog parks. You can get a cat park. What are you doing? That's what some of the people are gonna say. I'm trying to prevent a division of the shores. I'm trying to get in front of this and have you all join me so we can do the right thing, but we have to move. So what I suggest is, um, I'm pointing to whoever it was, I think it was Mr. Serafin, let's do the workshop as soon as possible. I'm pointing to Mr. Benton, let's hire a consultant to help us do this the right way. And I'm pointing to you, Madam Mayor, because it was an excellent idea, maybe get somebody else to advise us as to what other opportunities, and maybe it all can meet in the middle, there's a hybrid that we can keep the golf course, we can keep the clubhouse, and maybe we can add something else which generates tax revenue, but it's not a monster which pollutes and, and causes right. car traffic, like Mr. Lafredo said. But we gotta get moving. And, and you realize that, that not only did people move to the shores, there's people who were born here into the country club. That country club is the fabric of this community. And we have to tread lightly, but we have to tread quickly. And, and, and I'm, I wake up at night already, wake up that our bids are gonna say that we have to pay two million a year to run that course. And how can I look the constituents in the eye and say, yeah, let's spend two million to run that when we can't get a community center. Ours is a disgrace. So there's a lot of issues here. And maybe, maybe if we ball this up in clay and we work it out into the kiln, it comes out into something that betters the community. But we need to keep all options open. And what I did about this thing, and I know they're cringing again, Mr. Serb and Mr. Benton, about this big thing, I am trying to predict what a lot of the residents, articulate people are going to say is I don't golf, I don't go there, I want something for me. And that's why I'm insisting on making it green. If you, if you had blinders on in the last two months and maybe you didn't see what the residents are yelling for. And I think we have to go forward and maybe we'll get no bids, but we have to be able to do what's right and prepare for what's coming if, it, if, if we're saying it's gonna be a golf course again and we're gonna to have to pay for it or something. So that's my suggestion, move forward on all three fronts. Schedule the workshop as quickly as possible so you know we can all chew on it, we can think about it, spitball at the same time, get the village. That was an excellent suggestion of getting somebody from the business to assist. And then maybe somebody's gonna tell us that that you know, yeah, you can make some sort of eco park, you can do this. I, I don't know, but let's get it moving. Thank you, Councilman Meltz. I, I appreciate your comments. I would also just add that again, I'm not married to anything. I'm just making sure that we're thinking about all avenues and things that matter to Miami Shores as a whole. Um, again, I am a member of the country club. I enjoy using it. I enjoy going there, but um, I think we would, would be doing the community overall a disservice by not investigating or looking to look into all of the options that may or may not be there. I don't know the answer to it. So I agree, I concur with you, Councilman Meltz, that we should have a workshop. We need to get a consultant and that we should ha maybe have someone come in and tell us what other possible options there are. It doesn't mean we're gonna do it, but at least we should have the full benefit and breadth of information. I mean, it's. I, I just suggest that because I don't know what this looks like long-term. Yes, uh, Attorney Serafin. Does anybody oppose that? <laughs> Tom, did you hear that? 
I heard it. All right. Did, that, that, any, any other comments from members? Is, no. As I said, I use Northeast, if I may, Madam May, I use Northeast Second sure. Avenue as an example. This is something that's that's going to be, you know, the, the first decision is going to be, what do you do going forward after September the 30th? Because all great ideas, you're, you're absolutely right, Madam Mayor, it's not the highest and greatest use of the property. What can we do there? It's going to take a while to vet this out and even to bring a consultant on board yeah. to do the magnitude of study that, that you're talking about here tonight. That That's going to take a couple of months easily just to do that. You know, I was thinking about, um, you know, I know a consultant there that, that you know, can come for a, a minimal uh, price that's within my my um, purchasing threshold to get us moving on on bringing another golf course operator in here. But if we're going if we're going long term, one of the things in our workshop that, that we've got to discuss first and foremost is what are we going to do after September thirtieth? Uh, Vice Mayor Birch. Yes. Yeah, so I first of all, I was looking at, at workshop uh, dates, and we could do. Uh, possibly a week from today, the 26th. Um, but at any rate, I, um, I am concerned that our choices right now are a little bit different than investigating the highest and best use. Because the choice right now, as we just discovered by paying a certain amount of money to cover part of the golf course maintenance, that is an the grass grows every day. That is the thing that I really would like to get that bid going first. R remember that we're talking about if we if we were going to do an agreement. I've heard the 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 term of five years. Five years is what PCM had. So this process, and as Mr. Benton said, when we did the downtown development study, this process is a long one. If we're going to turn the ship away from 100% golf course country club. So that getting that RFP out and having a good one and a good response to it, to me is very important and it's item number one. And concomitantly have a, a, a study that's going on for the other uses. Um, and I, I'm sensing we have an agreement on that. Uh, so, I'm wondering maybe if we, we don't have to have a workshop, we can just move ahead with those two things. Attorney Serafin? Um, I have a suggestion after hearing all of the comments. It sounds like the preferred consensus course of action would be one, get an RFP consultant ASAP, like now. Two, get our RFP out on the street as soon as we can based on the advice of this consultant. Three, find a land use consultant. That's what I prefer to call <laughs> uh, to discuss other possibilities, um, not necessarily now, but promptly and put him to work. And then four, once he's done his job, have a workshop set before the bids are awarded under the RFP while we still have options. But meanwhile, get the RFP out on the street and get the process rolling. Uh, in the words I heard earlier from someone today, uh, anyone disagree with that? I Hear that? Not, that <laughs> that's neat and buttoned up. Yeah, I, I like the order of that. That's good. Very nice. Um, so, uh, Mr. Attorney, how do I call the it sounds like we have consensus. And that was the purpose of my, does anyone disagree with that? Right. So do we have consensus on the three parts, the three steps that attorney Serafin just laid before us? Yes. 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 Okay. Very good. Right. I'll Very work good. with Tom. We'll make that happen. Thank you. Item 7B, discussion and possible action regarding the approval of the doctor's charter school charter renewal. Staff on this item is the village attorney. Really? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Christine Gerardo, who I hope is is uh, on with us, is the school board 
uh, Council, and of course, uh, Dr. Kelly Andrews uh, hopefully is still on as well. As uh, recited in my memo, uh, believe it or not, the initial 15-year charter for a doctor's charter school uh, is set to expire very shortly this year. Uh, and uh, there needs to be a charter renewal, which is a long involved process uh, involving negotiations uh, between the charter school authority, the charter school board, uh, including Miami Shores Village, of course, and uh, the school board, uh, downtown Miami-Dade Public Schools. That process has been long and arduous, but there is now a document that I understand the uh, doctor's charter school board uh, finds acceptable. I have reviewed it. I've made some changes that the school board was gracious enough to uh, accept, and uh, it's awaiting. Um, they want to hear from us that it's acceptable to us before they put it on the Miami-Dade uh, Public Schools School Board's agenda. So that's the purpose of squeezing it onto this agenda here tonight, uh, if you've all had a chance to review it. Um, I believe the entire document could have been reduced to about 10 pages, but I'm not a school administrator. And uh, it, it's uh, comprehensive to say the least, but I'll let uh, Dr. Andrews or Christine, if, if they like, uh, present, but uh, we're supporting it and we believe they need your approval to move forward. So I want to thank you all for consideration of this process. Uh, it wasn't a clear process to begin with, um, there were things that we had to do as far as the application, uh, and then, um, and I presented that to you in, um, I think it was November or December, and, um, and then going to the contract negotiations. So, um, thank you, Mr. Serafan, for getting involved in this, because there were some, many things that were unclear to us when we were, um, negotiating this contract to begin with. So, and I want to thank Christine Urado, who has been so diligent. She knows the district and what their um, uh, culture is in, in putting this together and what their um, requirements are. And that has helped to, to guide us through the process. So Christine, do you have anything you want to add? No, I just want to thank the, the council for putting this out there on their agenda. This, I know it was short notice and turnaround time. So we appreciate your consideration of this. Um, this is something that we had, we did negotiate with the school board. Um, they're not, uh, they don't look very favorable about many changes, but we were able to put in um, some of the changes mainly to protect the village itself. Um, so I think that that's definitely a, a win for the village. Um, but again, this is, they have a standard contract they'd like to use with everyone. Um, and this was drafted by Dade County Public Schools. So for a lot of it, it aligns with what most charter schools are doing. And then you have some special addition, additional protections that they did not grant other charter schools. But as a village, they were, they were a little more amenable to these changes. Um, and it was, it was definitely beneficial to have Mr. Serafan on that Zoom meeting, um, you know, representing your interest as well. So I appreciate that. I think they gave in to some of our points just to get me off the call. <laughs> Vice Mayor Birch. Yes, I, I have some comments. And I, uh, I, first of all, Christine, you and I haven't met, but I, I really appreciate the work that you've done for our school, along with Dr. Andrews and um, your relationship with the district, which is always, I think, helpful when you have a municipal charter and no management company to have someone like you to, to really uh, go ahead. But I, I have a few comments. Maybe uh, Dr. Andrews won't agree with all of them, but I, I do, after having gone through the document that Mr. Serafin wrote up um, and then reviewed the current one, I have some things to say because I have a, a history myself with the district that was long ago and I found myself completely intimidated. So this is what I wanted to say about this whole thing. I first heard the term boilerplate as a teenager when it relates <laughs> to snow skiing. All my friends were accomplished skiers and I was just beginning. There is this thing called boilerplate ice. It's unforgiving, solid gray, very hard, and often causes a skier to fall. It can be a hidden hazard when fresh powder falls upon it. So I've never been fond of the term as it relates to documents but that's the term that was bandied about with charter school contracts 
in the latest era of giving them out. And there are now more than, I believe, 130 of them in this district alone. So I'd like to express thanks for Mr. Serapian for his work with our charter. He cooperated with the DCS attorney and achieved some important changes to the document. Recall that this charter serves as the blueprint for our school and must be understandable to any new school leader, school administrator, and every new and existing board member. It showers a heap of responsibilities on all concerned with running the school. I'd like to cite a few of the victories for clarity that I noticed in reviewing the new document. Mr. Serafan, you got Miami Shores Village assets and the language recognizing some of the school's assets were purchased with village grant funds. In the admissions and enrollment, acknowledging the Miami Shores Village resident preference. In taxes and bonds section, acclaiming the village's authority. The clarification of indemnification, very important, appreciate that. The duties and responsibilities of our board authority, inserting our own ordinances directives of governing board responsibilities, very important again. What did we do all this for? So the customization of this document that we maybe originally didn't think was going to be possible, I think we have a more customized document. At least the name Miami Shores Village appears in a lot more places than it did originally. And I'm grateful for that. So I want to thank you, Mr. Serafin. Very good job. Thank you very much. Any other comment from council? So, I, if not, if I not the mayor, I, I would I would go ahead and move the uh, approval of the charter school contract for the fifteen years, um, and with with the blessing of the council, I would move that that would be approved. Absolutely. Do you, do I have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mayor, if I we can record a unanimous um, roll, roll call vote. Roll call. Okay. Yes. Councilman Brady. Yes. Councilman Lafredo. Yes. Councilman Meltz. Yes. Vice Mayor Birch. Yes. Mayor Weiger. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, thank you everyone. Very, thank you very much. Thank you. Next now time. go get it approved by the school board. Yeah. <laughs> Next month. We'll All do right. that. We'll do, we'll do. The next item is announcements, COVID-19 update provided by the village manager. Madam Mayor, I have one item to announce tonight. I heard back from Representative Dottie Joseph's office this afternoon, and they have uh, uh, worked with the farm share folks, and they have put aside June the 10th, which is a Wednesday, to do a farm share food giveaway uh, within our community. Barry University has graciously allowed us to use their large parking lot across the street from the charter school. The trucks will begin arriving with the food at 8 a.m. And uh, shortly thereafter, the food distribution will begin and it will, it will go until the food uh, is all passed out. Uh, usually it's about a, a two hour process they require tents and tables and chairs and things like that from us. They need about 14 volunteers. I would invite you all to uh, to attend if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to have staff members there and, of course, police there to uh, direct the traffic flow. It uh, is right now <coughs> set up to be um, vehicular uh, give a vehicular giveaway only. So so there's no walk ups the way it's it's presently configured. Uh, just, just to let you know, um, most communities have seen uh, up to a thousand cars in some uh, situations. So uh, we're going to have the midnight shift of our police department actively in that area there to try and line up the cars as best we can so that when we do open up, it'll, it'll go as smoothly as possible and keep the 
the queue, if you will, out of the residential neighborhood there. So June the 10th. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, we'll open it up to, uh, oh, no, do you have any uh, additional comments, Madam Clerk? No, Madam Mayor. Okay. We'll open it up to council comments. Uh, Mr. Serafin. Uh, yes, while we're technically on announcements, uh, I'd like to announce that I was favorably impressed by Vice Mayor Birch's um, uh, suggestion, uh, insistence that the village sponsor um, some lunches for the local heroes um, at the last meeting. And I am authorized by my firm to advise that uh, Genevieve's Job Love and Batista would like to contribute $500 to the village to help fund that. And I just Thank wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Um, any comment from council? We'll start with Councilman Meltz. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, again, I feel like I've talked too much during this meeting, but real briefly, um, I, I want to let the residents know who were uh, voiced their concerns to council about the speeding and traffic enforcement that that we did bring your concerns to village administration. And I'm confident, I was assured that uh, plans are in place to address those concerns. And as if you look at the local news and media the last few days, it, it's not unique to Miami Shores. Uh, unfortunately, there's lesser car, cars on the roads and more folks think they can increase their speeds. Um, there's, there's just, it's, it's statewide, but that doesn't excuse it and our village administration and officials uh, have reassured me and I'm confident that they're going to do everything possible, the resources to put the plan into place to make it safer and to uh, adhere to the enforcement. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Lafredo. Madam Mayor, uh, thank the council for their attention and participation tonight. Also, I wanted to point out that um, John Ice had wrote a a little statement on Facebook about perhaps doing some st partial street closures on the streets surrounding Northeast Second Avenue to support the restaurants. I'd like the council to consider that as we see what happens in the future. But also the theater I think is, is, is not doing well right now. And I'd like the council to consider maybe offering the use of Plaza 98 on a more regular basis to the theater if they wanna use it. I mean, not on a day like today, but they can maybe, we might help them or assist them in moving some of their activities outside if they're interested in doing that or find other ways to support the theater that doesn't cost the village any money, but try to show them that we support and encourage their presence here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well stated, Councilman Lafredo. Uh, Councilman Brady? Yeah, I just wanna thank the uh, Dr. Charter School Board, Dr. Kelly Andrews and our attorney and their staff for getting that, DART, that uh, charter school renewal together. Hopefully that will proceed smoothly. And um, thank you for the uh, Councilman Meltz for getting the agenda item on here so we can immediately address the situation with the uh, management contract with, with the country club. And just thanks to uh, everybody here you know, for the lively discussion and, and consideration of all these important things. And the last thing I just mentioned, I know everybody's starting to get a little bit of cabin fever. Um, you know, please be diligent, keep maintaining all your social distancing and washing your hands and it will help get this thing to a, uh, a quicker end. I think if we uh, give up on everything we've been doing now or start to slack off now, we might end up in a much worse problem for a lot longer. So thank you all again. Have a, have a great uh, couple weeks. Season. Thank you, Councilman Brady. Vice Mayor Birch. Uh, I'll be brief since I did do a lot of talking, I admit. Um, and uh, But I attended right before this meeting something very moving. Uh, and I want to thank our police department and Miami-Dade Fire Rescue for um, contributing massively to it. It was a parade for a woman who is celebrating her five-year liver recovery of, of liver transplant called a liverversary and you should have seen 105th street and all the people were out there they were waving whatever they could wave they were beating on pot lids they were so happy for this woman and it was very touching and our police were great they kept the thing moving um the 
there was a, there was actually um, I think local ten was there. It was very touching and a great celebration for this resident of Miami Shores who is a teacher. She's in her mid thirties, I think, and she is celebrating her fifth year from a liver transplant. There was a pitch, you know, for organ donorship, which I really believe in, and I think it's a good thing to mention that um, is possible for us to donate our organs. Uh, and she is such a recipient and such a worthy one. So thank you for listening to that. Thank you. Thanks for the discussion, everyone. It's a great discussion. Um, I want to send a shout out to little Ryan London, who hand wrote this note, because I think civic engagement is so important. So Ryan, on behalf of myself and all my council members, bravo. This was this is excellent. Thanks for taking the time to write this. I think we all enjoyed reading it and I'm going to keep this one. So thank you, Ryan. And, and we'd love to hear from you more often, buddy. Thank you. Um, with regard to businesses, and I'm going to post this on my social media and I'll, and I'll hopefully uh, the village will do the same. The, the Miami-Dade County has um, a program called Back to Business Box. Back to Business Box. And they're committed to helping businesses get back to work. So if you are reopening and you're a small business and you need assistance, uh, the Miami-Dade County's Back to Business Boxes will be offering personal protective equipment, PPEs, to assist, assist with safety requirements. And there are a few requirements here, um, but you have to be a small uh, business and have gross receipts of less than $250,000. I will post this and we'll make sure it gets posted, but these are some of the resources that are out there and I want small businesses to know some of our business owners might be interested in this. Um, and you can also find this information at um, uh, www.miamiday.gov uh, back to business box. So I just wanted to share that and we'll get it out there so people are aware that this is there because I know people are coming out of their own pocket to make sure they have PPE in order to protect not just the um, customers, but the people who are working uh, in those establishments as, as well. Um, I don't know. I want to thank everybody for, you know, all their comments tonight. Um, we are in a difficult, challenging times and decisions like these are going to be hard going forward. We've got a lot of difficult, I think, decisions to come. So. I'll just bear that in mind as we go forward. Um, and I have no further comments. Um, so are there any other comments from anybody else on the council? And there being no further business of the council this evening, this meeting is therefore adjourned. Thank you guys. Stay safe. Stay home. Bye.